Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to talk about the marine time transition. It's a good lead up from uh, the earlier session from energy to shipping. I think these two are now getting closer and closer to working together. So I think just uh, give uh, audience who are from the energy sector a quick context that the shipping industry in Singapore is also very vibrant and very uh, competitive in terms, these are some of the results for 2022, handling about 37.3 million TUs, uh, and of course we're going to build our tour spot at 65 million TUs. We also mentioned about the bunkering hub, so this is why Singapore plays, uh, uh, we want to play an active role because as a bunkering hub we do want to support many of the ships that calls on Singapore. This chart, I think many would have seen and therefore no need for me to elaborate, but I think what I wanted to highlight is the Singapore's role in this area. So Singapore plays the role of vice chair of the MEPC at IMO. So I saw the team going up there for two weeks, negotiating with different uh, country members and getting to that revised target was an, uh, a good milestone. Uh, setting also milestones, the target for 2030, 2040 sets work for me. And uh, Singapore will also be the chair for the steering committee looking at all the emission and economic measures that is going to be report back to IMO by uh, end of next year. So Singapore wants to take action and play an active role in supporting at the IMO level. And a black back home uh, as a flag state, so I think that's also Singapore want to advocate a strong, credible and inclusive uh, climate change, taking guidance from the IMO. So you see here all the various activities and milestones that we have, whether it's in the standard setting, we talk about standard setting is important, we talk about the bridge builder, getting various economies to look at the uh, carbon footprint and the international projects that we can work together and of course to advocate for the climate action uh, both locally and at the IMO level. All right. So when we understand how uh, carbon accounting is going to work, uh, so first you have the, have the domestic carbon accounting, then you have all the marine time carbon accounting that is reporting to IMO and aviation reporting to the ICAO. So if you have air, sea, and the land, that's you know, uh, in total going to sum up very much the carbon footprint of the world. And that is why Singapore needs to play three roles, one in the domestic area. And as my colleague in AMA have already shared, uh, DPM Wong has already announced the 2050 target uh, late last year. And in the marine time, this is where then the port, which is considered as the domestic carbon emitter, will have to start planning out what are they going to do for 2030, 2040, 2050. And many of the initiatives here will lead to the net zero target. For the international as a bunkering hub, the support for international shipping will be coming under the IMO. And this is where a uh, few years back, we already started working with the Class Society, with uh, NTU, with uh, all the research community to look at the different pathway where shipping ownership owners, operators are looking at, at the various uh, fuel types. So Singapore's, uh, our stand will be, we need to be a multi-fuel port. We are supporting the multi, uh, international shipping and therefore we need to support multi-fuel. Um, and then we'll continue to look at the steps uh, in terms of uh, making the steps to fuel and to ensure that the fuel that we're going to support will be safe in terms of the way we do bunkering in Singapore. Uh, you may have heard that we have done the methanol bunkering early this month, uh, late uh, uh, in August. Uh, later, I will have a slide on that. But in terms of this uh, ammonia, you find that EMA and MPA now starts to need to come together, right? Because it is both for the energy consumption as well as for the shipping. 
So beyond the IMO level, within Singapore, the whole of government approach to the low carbon and uh, hydrogen strategy will require different government bodies to work together. And this is an example of where EMA and MPA works together on the ammonia EOI. Then we took a, talk about the uh, electrification of hovercraft. So early this year, early this year we have already announced that uh, by 2030, every new hovercraft that comes on board has to be fully electrified or 100% biofuel or any net zero carbon fuel. So that's already been announced. That set the stage for our hovercraft community to work towards this net zero, uh, this uh, area of electrification of hovercraft. So if on the screen you see that besides just stating this is the timeline for everyone to go on full electrification, play the role of a facilitator. So we have launched uh, the e expression of interest for industry to come forward with the best design. So if you want to, we talk about efficiency, if you want to have your hovercraft to be most energy efficient, you need to rethink about the design. So that is on the proposal for new design. Then we also need the charging points to be ready. So that is the other expression of interest where we ask uh, to look at uh, trial charging points for electrification of our hovercraft. Then uh, earlier this month, we actually, or late last month, we actually had uh, methanol bunkering in Singapore. That's the first uh, methanol uh, bunkering in Singapore. And it takes us uh, quite a few months to get ourselves ready for it because uh, you know, in the new fuel, one of the concerns that we have is no longer an oil spill. It is more than an oil spill. It is a plume cloud, it is in gaseous state, and when the gas flow back into the island, that's not something that we will take it lightly. So there's a lot. On your right hand side, you see all the modeling that we work with the research institution to make sure that the, the operations are done in a safe manner, consideration, considering the wind direction, the current of our waters in our port waters, and all that aspects will take into consideration before we allow the bunkering to happen. So you see that uh, again, uh, all these various mechanisms uh, are being put in place. Uh, and uh, MPA staff also went through the firefighting course to make sure that we are now familiar with if there is a leak and that if there is a fire for out of uh, methanol, uh, it is uh, really quite invisible flame how are staff going to know and how they're going to fight fire for the safety of the vessels and of the people around them. So many of these equipments are used uh, to safeguard the <clears throat> And then the next uh, step for the methanol bunkering is to do uh, the te technical reference for methanol bunkering. So that start to, after we learn together with our colleagues uh, from from the industry, we need to formulate the standards so that we can then publish that as a Singapore standard for methanol bunkering and more trials to validate these standards. And this will be the process in which we will take to look at other type of fuels. So this, for supporting the joint industry projects, these are all the various uh, other forms, electrification and biofuel trials that are happening also in the Singapore port waters. So it's important to get many of the stakeholders together. I think that's the theme for today in terms of collaboration. We don't have all the answers, but we need to work together with the industry partners, research institutions, uh, even the few suppliers to work on all these various aspects. These are some of the uh, consortium that have actually come forward to work with uh, MPA and the industry here to look at some of the ammonia aspects of uh, the trial. Uh, during the Singapore Marine Time, I think we also have many experts to come to share the various aspects of their ammonia study, and I think that's big, provide a valuable inputs to the industry as well. Now, to look at this, uh, developing a hydrogen-based eco uh, ecosystem, uh, it must be, uh, we heard from the previous panel, it must be commercially 
feasible. Right? So it is to be whether it is the market pricing, whether it is the standards, whether it must be cost effective. These are various aspects that we have to look at. So many of this is to, to, to make sure that this use of this future fuel are for multiple purposes, whether it is for power generation, for port operation, or for other applications on board the ships. So this is the future fuel pathway. I think DND has done a great job in many of these forecasts. Uh, locally, we are also building that capabilities in uh, conjunction. This is a report by NTU researcher to look at some of this uh, pathway for uh, methanol, for biofuel. And in, in the context of Singapore and Asia, in our climate, the humidity is high, how it affects the uh, biofuel and how is it going to affect the engine of our of the boats and the ships that is using them those are studies that actually we will then pour in the investment dollar to get this report out so that we can then share it with the industry as well i have one minute and 47 seconds so let me just go on uh, these aspects of talent development is also important so I think that's the also some a, one area in which we'll continue to work on. In fact, we together with Singapore Maritime Foundation, we have set up a committee to look at the various new skills that our seafarers and our onshore colleagues that needs to be trained in, especially for the new fuel that is coming. So this is a group of uh, many researchers and experts that we rely on, knowing that in this new fuel, Besides the class society, which we are very happy that we are able to get the class society to work with MPA, we also want to build the capabilities in the research institution across Singapore to make sure that they look at the various aspects of fuel, the seafarers training, cybersecurity, digitalization, optimization. We talk about many of these AI programs that we actually have uh, set up with the uh, research institute. And beyond Singapore, I think the international partnerships are also important to enable this scaling of uh, digitalization and decarbonization. So I think that's an uh, important part is we also mentioned and heard is on the green corridor, coin uh, and digital corridor, because we think that both green, which is decarbonizing, and the digital part is equally important. Putting these two elements together will gain the efficiency that we can see it immediately, as well as a long, long, longer term part of the future fuel. So I think uh, many aspects, putting this together, catalyzing all this uh, marine time Singapore, I think that's the point that I'm going to make here. Uh, and there's just one short video on Tuas. Since I cannot bring you to Tuas port, I thought maybe we bring the Tuas port to you. So if I can ask uh, colleagues to play it for you.